Hi, good evening. It's Miriam and welcome to Cooking Uncovered. Tonight I'm going to do a video about stock making. And this is chicken stock making because at school my students are going to learn how to make stock in about three days once they perfect the dreaded onion. <laughs> That's what they're doing at school right now is learning how to chop onions, then celery, then carrots, and leeks and all the essential vegetables. So I'd like to show you how to make a great soup stock. Now this is the soup stock that I made for my wonton soup. And it is absolutely delicious. And there's a little trick and I just want to show it to you. So in a stock pot of your choice, a nice big one, you're going to throw a bunch of great things into the stock pot. You're going to cover it with cold water, essentially. You're going to bring it up to the boil. You may stir it once and once only because if you stir it all the time, all the impurities of the stock get mixed into your lovely stock and they don't rise to the top. You want all the impurities to kind of come to the top. And don't cover it and don't ever bring it to a boil again. So those are the rules, three rules. Don't boil, don't cover, and don't stir. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start with my chicken and it's just in the fridge right here. Now, my recipe calls for three, my original recipe calls for three chicken legs. Tonight, I actually would like to use the chicken legs to roast for, and I'm going to de roast the chicken and then debone it for a salad. So actually, I'm going to add some chicken bones that I bought at the store. This is about three quarters of a kilo of chicken bones. There's tons of, of chicken meat on these bones. They are so cheap. I think like the whole thing was three dollars and it's going to make a great stock. So here's my pot. Chicken bones in. Perfect. Next, you're going to add two onions. Now, notice my onions. I've got them huge and I'm just going to throw them in. My second onion is here. And again, don't worry if there's a bunch of imperfections. Don't worry if there's a bit of skin on, because you are going to strain this stock. So I'm just going to cut this onion in four and peel it off. You, you don't really want the skins in there. Peel that off and uh, peel it off, the skin off, and just throw it into the pot. So anything you have available as far as onions go, it doesn't matter. Even if your onions are ready to throw out, whoops, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> wrong pot. Garbage here, stock here. Garbage here, garbage here, stock here. So two onions is a really good ratio. And these are actually large, very large onions, but it doesn't matter. Even if you end up with, uh, you know, it's about three, three cups of onions. So in that goes, so just big chunks of onions. Next, you're going to add um, three bay leaves. Now these, Bay leaves are sadly the last of the bay leaves from my sister's garden in Machosan, where we did the wonton recipe. And Marie Trace has a fabulous garden every summer, and I must, the next time I'm there, I have to get some more bay leaves because these are absolutely delicious. So three of these, in they go. Some peppercorns. Now, notice my peppercorns, can you see them there? They are just very, very, very tiny. I've got about 10 here. In they go. Now, next, you want some diced leeks. About, well, you know, two cups of diced leeks. Diced leeks. Leeks lend an exceptional, flavorful quality to your stock making. Now, I have a leek here. And see this part? So this is your root end down here. And this is kind of your part that you really don't want to put in your salads. So I'm going to actually cut that off. So this I can use for sautéing, I can use this for soup, I can use this for braising, anything. But this part I don't really want to use, so I'm going to add that to my stock. Because even though you don't really want to eat it because it's quite tough, into my stock it goes. So about one full leaf it ends up being. I have some celery that is a little bit, you know, I don't really want to add it to my salad tonight because it's a little bit limp and it's a little bit discolored. It, I wouldn't want to put it in my chicken salad sandwich. I wouldn't want to put it in the salad, but it's perfect for stock making. Don't throw this stuff away. Keep it in your freezer or your, your cooler, your fridge, and in it goes in your stock. So, celery in. Now notice here, 
I'm going to put my leeks in now too. Here I have my bag from my fridge. See my good old bag. In that is some, uh, a little piece of yam that I didn't use. I've got some zucchini here which I could use in my stock, but I'm going to reserve this and use that with my chicken. And I've got some jalapeno, a uh, little, oh, a serrano pepper. If you want a little bit of heat in your stock, put a little serrano pepper in. I warn you about putting um, red vegetables like beets or yams or uh, sweet potatoes in your stock because it will, or carrots. It will make your stock sweet and it'll change the whole consistency. So stick with your green vegetables, all right, to make your stock. This is also another, um, I've got more leeks here. I didn't even realize I have these. Look at all these leeks I've got. So these, I will, I will hold these because these are perfectly good. And I'll wait and I'll use them for a stir fry, I'll use them for soup. And um, that's one of the things that my students are going to be doing later on in the week also is soup making. So we have chicken, we have onions, we have peppercorns, we have leeks, we have celery. Uh, what have I left out? Oh, yes, this is the trick. All right, here's my bunch of my, my cilantro that I've just bought at the market. Now, the trick here is you tear this off, see the cilantro stems, put that right in your stock, because you're not going to use those anyway. Throw, you would not believe the beautiful flavor this makes the soup stock. And this part, of course, I'm going to save for when I make my soup, when I make my salad, which of course is in another video. So this, we're going to just cover it with cold water. Now this might not be enough cold water, I might have to go to the sink, but what you want is this, all these ingredients immersed in water. Not overflowing, just immersed. So give me a second, let me go to the sink, because we need more water. Cold water, of course. You need to have cold water for stock making. That's another rule. So here we have it. Here's my pot ready to go on my stove. So this is what it's looking like. It's all that beautiful. It's got just water just to cover it. The bones are in there. Once I get it on the stove, I'm going to turn it on high. I'm going to bring it to a boil, stir once, and then I'm going to leave it. Once it comes to the boil, so it's rapidly bubbling on top, then I turn it down to a simmer and I'm going to simmer it for only one hour. There's a misconception out there that you have to boil stock for hours and hours to get the best flavor. Actually, that's not so. If, of course, if I was in a restaurant and I was making 40 or 50 um, gallons or quarts of soup, of course it takes longer. But at home, honestly, one hour, and then your stock is ready to go. So let me put this on the stove. Turn that on. So that's going to take... That's going to take about 20 minutes to come to the boil, and then I'm going to turn it down to simmer. Now, I just want to show you what you end up with. So, after you've done all that, and as I said before, at the very beginning, if you want to use the chicken legs, the chicken legs are great for chicken stock as well. They do add a little bit more of an essence, of course, because you have more chicken. The problem with using chicken legs, and it makes such delicious chicken stock, is that the chicken, after you boil it and simmered it for an hour, really the chicken isn't really um, good to use in anything else, unfortunately. But I really do like to buy the chicken bones at the store and get them at a really good deal. So what I did was yesterday I made chicken stock and I'm just going to strain my chicken stock. The beauty of this is if you pour it through a sieve, it takes off the fat as well because the fat has congealed because, of course, it's been in the fridge all night. So, I just want to show you this. And isn't that beautiful? All the fat and the gunge are in my sieve. And this is my chicken stock that I am going to use for risotto, soup, um, sauces, whatever you like. And it's so easy. So, thanks for joining me on Cooking Uncovered. Don't forget to go to my website, miriamboris.com. If you have any questions at all, you can always email me at mlboris um, at talus.net. So thank you for watching for my soup stock. And remember, look for that wonton soup recipe. And this was that luscious chicken stock that I used for that. So thank you for joining me on Cooking Uncovered. And I'll see you later. Shout out to all my students.
you later. Bye-bye.